hope you want to hear a great Herb Albert story. <laughs> you all know the great drummer Shelly Mann. Fantastic, wonderful drummer. He's a good friend. And after Herb had this big hit, Shelly had heard that I was a drummer on the thing. And I had to be walking down, I think, on Wilcox. And Shelly Mann had just opened a beautiful nightclub called Shelly's Man Pool. Little jazz place, it was great, great fun, great food, great music. And I saw Shelly, and Shelly saw me and said, hey man, I walked across the street. He said, that's quite a record, that thing you did with the, with the T-Wonder Brass. I said, yeah, man, nothing but fun. But I don't think you're going to be very happy about it. He said, what do you mean, Al? I said, Herb tells me he's opening a nightclub right across the street here, a jazz club. And Shelly said, oh no, you're kidding, man, my God, what's the name of it? He said, a tea on a brass hole. <laughs> Listen, all I can say is thank you to everybody. I'm not really reading this, am I supposed to read this? David Goggin, I have to, there's a couple of thank yous I have to send out if I, please, uh, give me just a couple of minutes. That's what Jimmy said, right? I, he doesn't remember me, but we were actually in a Monterey Pop Festival together. Just wonderful. And his speakers, there's no question about his sound. An amazing, dedicated gentleman when it comes to electronics and sound. Just amazing. But I wanted to, there's people that, you know, it would take me weeks to thank everybody. So like they say in some of the big shows, you all know who you are, you know, I want to send out my thanks. But in particular, there's one guy that was up on stage a little while ago. He goes by the name Mr. Banzai. But I always knew him as David Goggin. But he's Mr. Banzai. And thank you. Thank you for, for Mr. Banzai. But the thing is, he called me one day and he was doing a column in that famous, the most famous technical uh, magazine, uh, Mix Magazine. And he said, you know, I would really, yeah. He said, I would really like to have do a, a luncheon with Banzai if, I, if you would. I said, sure, I'd be happy to. So I did a, did a nice interview with, with David. He, he was always David Goggin to me. And I said, uh, I said, I hope it works for you. We did a great interview, and he said, you know, Hal, there's so much here. We've, we should do another, maybe a part two. He said, why don't you write a book? And I said, I've got time to write a book. I'm going from session to session. I ha hardly have time to relieve myself. <laughs> so David said, well, maybe we can do something about it. So he went to, I believe, one of his bosses, was Brad Smith, sitting over here, brother of Chad Smith, who was just up here a little while ago, was really getting family circle. Oh, they're here. I thought you got on the bus, were you? Okay. And so Brad and, and, and uh, Mr. Banzai, I sat down and started writing a book. I had an old-fashioned computer in those days with the floppy disks, and I kept sending them over. And David, of course, was editing and doing it, and, and all of a sudden my book came out, Hal, Hal Blaine and the and Wrecking Crew. And people ask me all the time about the Wrecking Crew. How did you get the name of the Wrecking Crew? It's so simple, because when we came, we started doing demos. Me, Glenn Campbell, Tommy Tedesco, Leon Russell, Lyle Ritz was on bass, Ray Pullman was on bass, and everybody wanted us. All of a sudden, rock and roll was just starting. It was, the, it was part of the 50s, and I was lucky enough to have been on the road with the wonderful Patty Page, singing Rage, still looking for that, how much that doggy is in the window. And she's such a nice lady, and she recently passed away. And so I, I have to send thanks out to some of these people. H.B. Barnum, one of the great arrangers, came along, heard me with, his, with the diamonds on the road one time, or somewhere he heard me, hired me to come in and work with Sam Cooke. I mean, that was the be really the beginnings of my 
successful career, if you will. And Earl Palmer was the guy that was playing the rock and roll. Role, you know, sweet Earl, who was just fantastic. He was just could be was bombarded with music, and he started asking me to do some of his days. And I said, absolutely, and that's really how I got in the studios. So I really have to thank these people. There's so many. Uh, the wonderful one of the people that I loved so much was Petula. Still do, Petula Clark. We did some amazing recordings with her, and, and Jimmy Bone got a hold of me, and the great engineer Bones Howe was also producing. He's also a fellow drummer. A lot of people didn't know he's a great drummer. So I have to thank these people, but of course, most of all, I have to thank my parents. I mean, they were wonderful. They were always behind me because they, they knew that I wanted to play the drums. And my father was a shoemaker, and they were immigrants from the old country. And I said that, you know, they used to take me to the theater to watch bands and so forth. And they, and they said, your folks were in show business? I said, no, they were in luggage. <laughs> but the point was, <laughs> the point was, my parents were always behind me and my family. And I just want to thank my parents. They're gone now. I'll be back in about 20 minutes. <laughs> but it's really a pleasure to be up here. And I really want to say thank you to the solid. Solid is the word we always used to use for great music in the old days. And of course, I'm an old drummer. But solid was like today's right on. Um, to be able to, to be stand here today. I have so many wonderful awards, it's just fantastic. And my little home, I call it the Hal Blaine Museum now. And uh, if you're ever in Palm Desert, drop in, say hello. It's only 50 cents at the door. <laughs> and when you were thanking me, really are you? Thanks very much. Thank you. 